Turning Red is the newest Pixar film exclusively streaming on Disney+. And let me tell you something. As a prepubescent 13-year-old girl, this really spoke to me. The basic plot is this, a 13-year-old girl turns into a red panda. I had zero interest in this movie going in, didn't watch a trailer, didn't even want to sit through the thing. But then I forced myself to with my family and it turns out, I really like this. Much like Luca, which I also really enjoyed, this is another coming of age tale. And the protagonist here is the nerdy 13 year old Mei Lin. A large portion of Mei only exists to make her parents proud. Mostly her mother. Pretty much only her mother. Who is very strict and incredibly stalkerish. She will constantly be following Mei around, lurking behind trees, popping out from windows. Uh, this lady is really obsessed. Now I did see some early reviews come in on Twitter, just like one or two sentence snippets, and there's a little bit of polarization happening here. Uh, some people say the film is very alienating, saying that it's very specific to a target demographic. Uh, here it would be girls who are going through puberty. I don't think I could disagree harder. Yes, of course, if you're a girl who's been through these changes presented in the film, this is going to speak to you on a deeper level. But for me as a dad who's currently raising a girl who just turned 13, I mean, this hit home for me as well. And uh, it's a beautiful movie. And the way the story unfolds, I think, is very clever. How they use this red panda as a metaphor. Yes, it's obvious. But kids that are younger aren't going to see that. They're just going to see a cute red panda and how this girl is struggling with letting it out or keeping it in and all the push and pull of emotions weighing her down. The way that she struggles with her mom in communication and how her mom has her own baggage associated with the red panda. <laughs> Listen, if you would have told me years and years ago that the studio that made a film about toys coming to life when people aren't around would then later go on to make a film about self-discovery and periods, I, mean, I don't think I would have believed that. But uh, yeah, here we are. Plot out of the way, what else do we have to look forward to? Well, it's Pixar, it's Disney, you get beautiful animation. It's top tier, it always is. It's like such a boring thing to go over. You can see the trailers, this thing's gorgeous. It does get more playful than past Pixar movies. There's a little bit more of the Mitchells versus the Machines vibe going on, especially in the first half hour, which is very strong. I do think the movie does have a lull in the middle as often Pixar movies do for me, and just animations in general. It seems like when they really bring the plot out and try to build it up, things can slow down a bit. I know parents are always wondering if a film's appropriate for their little child who's like five or six. In this case, yeah, I think so. There's nothing, there's really no swearing, there's no violence. It's uh, colorful, it'll keep them entertained. There's one section towards the end that could be a little scary for them, uh, the way I would gauge that is, if they're able to sit through Inside Out in that clown sequence, this will be nothing. It's, it's not near as scary as the clown. This isn't your traditional quasi-musical Disney usually produces, like your Frozens or your Tangleds. Although there's some good jams in here. Because there's a boy band who's akin to like BTS or NSYNC or you know all the other flavors from the past. The group's called Four Town. Even though there's five members, I pointed it out to my family and then a minute later, May's mom makes a joke about it. I'm a fan of boy bands getting made fun of, and there's plenty of that here too. And damn it if their music isn't catchy. There's a brilliant moment in this picture where the beautiful old music clashes with the boy bands and it mixes together in a great way. I loved it. I myself grew up in a time where a woman's period was not something that was normalized. It was something that was like frowned upon. There was some shame associated with it. It was essentially Bruno. We don't talk about periods. So the fact that Pixar had the cojones to make something like this a story revolving around that time of the month, making it almost a, a mystical journey, a magical experience. Yeah, I mean, shit, keep doing it. I love this stuff. Are there going to be a bunch of Karens clutching their pearls over this? Yes. Are there going to be a bunch of edgelords yelling woke at the TV? No, because they're not going to watch it. They'll just see a headline and that'll be enough. But yeah, they'll do it online for sure. So there are my thoughts on Turning Red. Is it the best Pixar film to date? I don't think so, but it's up there. And being up there for Pixar, is that's high praise. I'd love to know your thoughts on Turning Red now. Let me know in the comments below. Like the video if you had a good time. Subscribe if you like movie reviews and news and rants and all sorts of movie-related content. I post it weekly here. And hopefully, I'll see you next time. I think for Pixar's bold next venture, they should tackle a subject everyone has related to at least once in their life constipation.
I mean, the world might not be ready for it, but uh, I got ideas. I have other ideas. I'll shoot them over to Pixar. We'll, we'll talk. Anyway, while, while I still have you, maybe think about uh, becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Or maybe click that button to become a join member right here on YouTube. You get access to exclusive videos, you get badges, just little fun perks as a thank you for supporting the channel. I'm also on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Adam Olinger, where I play video games kind of badly, but I have a good time. I chat with you and it's, it's fun. So, options, they're there. <laughs>